course, at the start of the show, you heard us talking about Clay being on his top secret assignment. He talked about it last hour as well. And right now we go to Clay. I can't say where you are. Uh, it's like where in the world is Carmen San Diego for people who were uh, old enough to remember that game who are uh, listening to us right now. I'll tell you tomorrow. Um, you know, I'll be able to talk a lot about what I'm doing. But, uh, but for right now, uh, I'm in a hotel room. I am in the United States because it's hard to travel very far outside the country, let's be honest, anywhere right now. Uh, and uh, we're going to have a big day. Um, and if people want to follow along on uh, Twitter, they'll, they'll see there, or you can see uh, tomorrow morning when you're driving into work, I'll be able to talk about a lot of the things that we're doing today. What does it rhyme with? No, no, no <laughs> early clues or anything else, just uh, that uh, I, I'll be back uh, in nor- my normal studio uh, on Friday morning. But uh, tomorrow we'll have a little bit of a different show. I think uh, Jonas Knox and Jeff Schwartz, I did talk about that, are going to be hanging out. But I'll also be on. And uh, then we'll be right back to, uh, to normal on, uh, on Friday. And uh, could be by the time we get to Friday that your Dodgers are going to be up 2-0 because they look like they were in pretty solid command over the Rays in game one. So the city of Los Angeles should be happy. Yeah, the only thing that was a little bit unsettling to me was at the end of the game, the camera – went in on the Rays players in their dugout, and they looked furious. So if they come out swinging, we could have an exciting game two tonight. But the Dodgers dominant in game one for those waking up on the West Coast with smiles this morning. They get the win, 8-3. to three. What did you think about Kershaw and the move of Roberts finally pulling him when it made sense to take him out? Well, I mean, it was funny to follow uh, everybody making that suggestion on Twitter, but it's amazing for Clayton Kershaw to think about where he's gone in the space of basically a week, uh, less than a week even, because when he lost game four to the Braves and uh, the Dodgers fell down to being 3-1 behind, you felt like, and I think everybody felt like, that he wasn't going to be able to win a World Series this year, and this was just going to prolong his stature as the best who has not won a championship. And certainly in Major League Baseball, uh, at the age of 32, you don't know how many more opportunities he's going to have. And we actually came on the next day after that show and said, who does he remind you of in other sports? And the best analogies that, that the listeners came up with were uh, Dan Marino in the NFL, you know, a guy who just couldn't quite win the Super Bowl, even though he dominated in the regular season. And then two somewhat still young guys in the NBA uh, with James Harden, who no matter what happens doesn't seem to be able to have uh, the postseason success that you would anticipate given his regular season success. And then this guy is super young, but so far when you're the back-to-back MVP winner and you can't make it to the finals at all, I think a lot of people thought of uh, Giannis. And so for Clayton Kershaw, it will have been a roller coaster to be sure because he gets the win in game one. He gets pulled at the right time. And, uh, and now, as you kind of uh, look forward, I would imagine he may have to come back and pitch again in Game 7 if we ended up there. But if the Dodgers take care of business, he may not pitch again. And if that takes place, then uh, it's a pretty, uh, pretty phenomenal uh, situation for him to finally get that World Series title to go along with uh, the title of best pitcher of his generation. And another thing that stood out last night, and this was talked about a lot during the broadcast, why did the Red Sox not pay Mookie Betts? Yeah, it's crazy. Why? Yeah, I mean, it's one of the uh, the, the great – I mean, they, they made the mistake with Babe Ruth a while back, right? And, uh, by the way, uh, Corey Seager in the NLCS was like, uh, was like Babe Ruth, and now all of a sudden Bellinger is, uh, is on fire, even with the messed-up shoulder. But I, it's not as if Mookie Betts is 39 years old, you know, yeah. and at the, at the back end of his career, and you just don't want to invest uh, substantial dollars in him going forward – I mean, the guy seems to be a phenomenal teammate and uh, and well liked by his uh, by the, by the other people in the uh, in the locker room, and uh, and and for the for the Red Sox, which are not a team that struggles with finances, right? I mean, they're one of the most wealthy teams in all of baseball. To basically make the decision, hey, we don't need this guy. Uh, that's pretty crazy. The other guy I was thinking about, David Price. I mean, do you think David Price now? who decided to sit out because he didn't think it was safe. Do you think he's watching the World Series right now saying, what in the world was was I thinking? Because the team is probably going to go win the World Series without him. I thought the same thing about Avery Bradley watching the Lakers win a championship without him. Yeah. Well, I think Avery Bradley, at least, uh, at least you could point to, you know, that scenario, I think he was particularly worried about being family. away from his family. Yeah. 
Whereas David Price, I mean, the way that Major League Baseball played, it's not like you would have ever had to abandon your family for substantial periods of time. You basically could live a normal life uh, even while the season was going on. So I'm with you. I think the Mookie Betts decision was crazy. Uh, I think the Dodgers are going to go on. I know people are probably nervous saying, oh, you're going to jinx it, but I think the Dodgers are going to go on and win this series. And, uh, and I think there's going to be a lot of celebration in L.A. between the Lakers and the, uh, and the Dodgers. Yeah, and they flashed a couple of crazy stats about bets last night. MVPs, one. World Series titles, one. Free tacos for the whole country, two. <laughs> this is the second time now in the World Series that Betts has stolen a base and gotten everybody a free taco. That's next Wednesday at all Taco Bells, so that's pretty cool. And yeah, one, by the way, good luck Good luck with that. If you're, It's like when they have the free donut day and you have to stand yeah. in line for eight hours to get a donut. Uh, I think I'd probably just pay $2 for a taco and go a different day. Yeah, I, I think you're right about that. And then also, he was the first player to have a walk and two stolen bases since Babe Ruth. And anytime they talk about you and Babe Ruth in the same sentence, that is just amazing. Yeah, well, it's, it's kind of interesting. It's uh, if, if I'm not mistaken, back in the early rounds of the playoffs, uh, the, the Padres had uh, something, did something with home runs that hadn't been done, I believe, uh, since Babe Ruth and uh, Lou Gehrig. So, uh, yeah, anytime you find out that you're on the same roster or on the same uh, legend, uh, legendary status as Babe Ruth or Lou Gehrig, it's probably a sign that things are going pretty well for you. Yeah, the third thing that stood out to me was Cody Bellinger. He obviously had that fourth-inning home run, which put the Dodgers up for good. He popped his shoulder out in Game 7 against your Braves after doing the uh, the Bash Brothers forearm with Kiki Hernandez. Which was insanely dumb. Yeah, it really was. Uh, that the force that they were going at. I understand that. he was fired up because of the magnitude of that home run, but if you have a weak shoulder – maybe, you know, don't choose that way to celebrate. Yeah, because yeah, it's happened two other times in his career with that same shoulder. So he goes right down to the training room. Trainer pops it in. He goes back out to the field for the end of that game. There was some talk about whether or not it would be sore or they'd have to put a brace on it. They didn't have to do that. He said he was fine, and he proved that with the home run. And we actually have that call from AM570 LA Sports. The Dodgers with their first runner in scoring position. And Bellinger with a fly ball to right field. Well hit on its way, gone a home run, and the Dodgers take a two to nothing lead. Of course, he celebrated by doing the kid and play kick step with his teammates because he said, "Hey, if I hit a home run, I'm not gonna do the forearm bash with anybody. I'm gonna tap feet." That was fantastic. Uh, I saw that. Uh, I saw that last night too, and uh, good for him. Too bad he didn't do it uh, in Game Seven, as opposed to he should. He should have been <laughs> a little bit more forward thinking, perhaps. And we'll see what happens tonight. Game two at Globe Life Fields, 8.08 p.m. Eastern on Fox. Blake Snell is going to go for the Rays. And the Dodgers decided finally on Tony Gonsolin for the start. And to your point, this is probably where Price would have pitched in the rotation. They're going to go with Gonsolin, who had his ups and downs so far in the postseason. They decided on that, though, to give Walker Buehler an extra couple of days off. Yeah, look, and Walker Buehler's obviously been fantastic, but I do think that question for David Price as, uh, as maybe he recognizes that the Dodgers are going to win a World Series title without him, and more importantly and, and best for Major League Baseball, no, con- no major issues, right? I mean, with any players, as knock on wood, uh, we come down the home stretch of that, uh, that game. By the way, Dodger fans pretty loud in that stadium last night, huh? Yeah. 90% Dodger fans. I'm surprised it's like. not higher than 90 because I don't know anybody who's a Rays fan. <laughs> I've never met one. I said that yesterday. All right, Clay, you sure you can't give us a, a clue, anything about where you're at? It's going to be a big day. It's going to be a big day until uh, until everything is ironed out. I, uh, I can't say anything, but I'll be right. talking about it tomorrow. And Are we going to find out on Twitter, on your Twitter yeah, account? Yeah, if you want to follow my Twitter account, at Clay Travis, later today I'll be, uh, I'll be letting people know what we're up to. All right, and before you landed, you were nice enough to record an interview with Herschel Walker, so we're going to have that coming up next. Yeah, that's super uh, cool, I think. If anybody out there is uh, familiar with Herschel Walker's career, as I imagine most people are, uh, he's one of the most iconic, certainly college football players of all time. Had a great pro career as well. Uh, but a lot of Georgia Bulldog fans will always long for the days of Herschel. Awesome. Have a beautiful day wherever you are. <laughs> all right, I will do. Everybody else out there, too, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. 